Good morning. Welcome. Let's stand and let's sing. Victory in Jesus. Shane. Morning, everybody else. Oh, you're at Grace Community Church in Overbrook, and it's great to have you here. Uh, I will tell you, I missed being here last Sunday, but we had a great service ourselves on the trip, and I tell you that because we had 51 people in a room appropriate for about 35, and it was fantastic. Fantastic! You could hear each other sing. You could hear the whole thing. There's something to be said about gathering together. So if you feel so moved, just fill up the first six rows of the church. It might be a better experience for everybody involved. Just a thought. All right. Um, attendance slips, please fill these out. Put them in the basket with your offering and anything else that you want to put in there. For example, nominations for elders and deacons, but Glenn's going to speak about that in just a moment. Actually, Glenn, let's do that now. Come on up, Glenn. Well, as Brian said, we need, uh, if anyone has anyone that they want to nominate for a uh, deacon or an elder, uh, you would want to ask them, talk to them about it and see, and then, of course, we want to uh, vent them on uh, their uh, faith and their testimony. Uh, as far as nomination for the congregation, uh, the congregational positions, 
uh, we've talked to Frank Rhodes. Uh, he's okay with, uh, with the nomination as far as chair of the congregation. Patrick O'Brien as vice chair. Bob Bostrom as treasurer. And Kelly Forbes as secretary. Those would be uh, names that the nominating committee has come up with. So, uh, if, and like I say, if anyone has any deacons that they would like to uh, have on the list, be sure and talk to them and, and uh, get in touch with the pastors on that. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I just wanted to thank everyone that was able to contribute um, to Help House this month. Um, I know it'll be a blessing to many people, and I wanted to thank you for that. Uh, we received a flyer from the Help House. They are now opening. They have a new website. Um, and we got on the flyer, it, it kind of explains the website and their phone number. Um, so if you are interested in, in getting one of their flyers, it's on our mission table that's next to the big um, world map there in the activity room. We're to the left. There's a table that has a lot of missions, things in there, and we have some flyers for Help House. So go ahead and take one. I'm not Italian, but I like to do that. And um, take one, I have more, so if I see it getting low, you know, I'll, I'll put some more there for you guys. Um, I do, I have heard that they still are needing coats, blankets and sheets, children's toys, of course with Christmas coming for the children. Um, so if you still have things like that, that you wanna get to them, then get one of those flyers and you probably want to call and make arrangements it does tell the hours they're open but i'm not sure how they gather all of this stuff so I, if it were me i would call them and make arrangements with them for that okay thank you for all you're doing god bless thank you chris thank you glenn um, there will be a short clip are we ready for that clip I don't want to surprise somebody, so let me make another announcement. Then we'll run this clip unless it's going right now. All right, uh, for Betty's Sunday School class. Um, some of you have asked me, we have an app for the church that, that we, uh, you're able to utilize, and some of you sent me an email, and I have to send you that invitation so that then you can get that. So if you sent me that email... I've sent it back to you. I noticed this morning most of you have not opened that. But if you would like to get that, it gives you the, actually it's a list of everybody that attends the church and it'll also have your giving and things in there. Send me an email at treasurer at gccandoverbrook.com. Treasurer at gccandoverbrook.com. And let me add in right now, if anybody has a real problem with the list that Glenn read you about officers, um, Talk to me because Bob Bostrom is going to be the next treasurer and I couldn't be happier about it. So I no longer have time to do this job and I don't enjoy it very much. I think Bob is a much, much, much better candidate for that. So I'm just letting you all know now. Vote for Bob. Okay. All right. Let's run that clip for Betty's Sunday school class. Uh, and it will be on Sunday mornings in the regular room.
And I guess, so my grandson just came in the door. This is the importance of routine. He knew that Grandma and Grandpa are always sitting down here in the front section. We're both up on stage, and poor Nathaniel didn't quite know where to go. So <laughs> if you do change your seat, make sure you tell your kin folks so they can find you. All right. Um, men's night out this month is on Monday the 15th. Ladies' night is Tuesday the 9th. I make a big point to tell you that because don't schedule your 4 by 4s over those sorts of things. 4 by 4s are fantastic, and we want those. We want you all involved with those. But So at the end of a 4 by 4 everybody gets out their calendar, and all the women decide when the next meeting is, right? And so we need to make sure men get in that conversation so you don't schedule over men's night. So... Uh, don't miss either one of those events this month. And nominations are due, as Glenn said. Simply, if you have someone and you've touched base with them, just write it on this, on your uh, attendance bulletin, what you would like to nominate them for and put that in the basket, and we will respond appropriately. Let's pray, and we will get back to real church. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house on a Sunday morning. We just pray for the service, we pray for the message that you have for us, that nothing gets in the way of that and it's received and the response is appropriate. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. It's uh, always good to, uh, this is the fifth Sunday of course, and the fifth Sunday we use the teen girls, or our worship team, so let's stand up and sing with them. This is, uh, sing 10,000 Reasons.
It's now time in the service when we concentrate or contemplate or emphasize, if you will, our givings, our tithes, our offerings, uh, the monetary gifts that we give. So uh, although we no longer pass the plate, please don't forget to make your contribution. And you know, when you're not here, it's not a free pass. Don't forget, when you're not here, and you normally make your contribution on the whatever month of the date, whatever week of the month, do it, even if you're not here. Little known fact, I'm going to share it with you right now. The lowest offering that we have had so far this year, last Sunday. So, if you were gone last Sunday, make sure you put in your offering. Um, we use your gifts. Uh, we do a lot of stuff. Chris was up here talking about mission work and all of that stuff. We send a lot of stuff out of this church, and we do that because you guys are faithful givers, and it's fantastic, and you understand the importance of it. So with that said, I will pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the many, many, countless gifts that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give a portion of it back in a structured way, the tithe as you direct us to give. Right off the top, the 10%. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you also for the opportunity to return our other gifts to you, donations of our times, our talents, and so on and so forth. We just pray that, pray that you use them to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isn't great that we have a God who loves us and he's above all. You know, we can be, get pretty anxious in this life because of all the turmoil and what's going on in the world and nation, but we have a God who's above all, and he loves us like Lisa sang. And, and uh, Anyway, let's stand and sing this song, Above All. Thank you. 
It's now time for communion. So if you have your elements, you might go ahead and get them out. If you don't, uh, raise your hand and somebody will bring you some. Uh, I went off script just a little bit ago on the offering and forgot to tell you something, and I'm about to go off script again on the communion, but hopefully the message will be better. So what I forgot to tell you was you can give online, and you can also give by text. The information is in the bulletin, and you can text give to grace to that number. But it's communion time. I watched Lisa up here singing. Pretty good stuff. How many of you remember Lisa right over there as Jesus' mother in God's masterpiece? Pretty moving stuff. We needed that sign of Lisa up here singing to remind us of that picture. We're headed into Veterans Day. I'm going this afternoon to help set up the World War or the Vietnam War Memorial Wall in Ottawa because we put those up, these memorials, to help us remember things. It's time for communion. It's not a grand, big, huge piece of something or another. It's not a wall. It's not a piece of granite. It's not something that costs a huge amount of money. But what we're about to do we do so that we don't forget, so that we have a memorial to what Jesus did on the cross, on the cross for us. And the price he paid is much greater than what we pay for any memorial that we build in someone else's honor. So at this time, take out your elements, get ready. Angela's going to play, but I want you to remember what Christ did for you on the cross. Just like whatever prods you to remember something good, something bad, something whatever, we all see things and they, they conjure up a memory, an image in our heads. Conjure up an image of what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross as Angela plays and when she finishes, we'll take the elements together. practice an open communion at Grace Community Church, which means that you don't have to be a member of Grace Community Church, although I hope that if you're not, you'll consider it. You just need to be a member of the larger body of Christ. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
Do you know that he died on the cross for forgiveness of your sins? If you've done that, this is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. This juice represents the blood of Jesus Christ shed for the forgiveness of your sins and mine. Dear Lord, we thank you for your body and your blood. And we never forget the price that you paid. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, why don't you stand again? I hope you guys are getting your work out, keeping you awake this morning, standing. I walked here this morning, it was 57 degrees, and so I'm glad I turned the heat up a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, let's sing this great old song of the faith, the old rugged cross.
Boy, Stan, I don't know. You was up there with four beautiful women this morning. Uh, that was a thorn among the, the, the roses. Yeah. Good job, guys. Good job. Yeah. Hey, kids, you all here this morning? Come on up. Come on up. Come on. Oh, Crystal, you're a little light this morning. You are. Yeah. Come on up, guys. We got more back there. Yep. And they're still coming. Oh, he's going the other way. Yeah. Now, what's Grandpa got that I don't have here? <laughs> a hat. All right, buddy. We're ready now. Good job, man. All right. How's everybody doing? All right. Well, you know, we're, uh, we're in, uh, well, I'll get Halloween behind us here, but uh, we're coming into the Thanksgiving uh, celebration, right? Yep. Can somebody tell me what Thanksgiving is all about? Oh, right there, first up. Family. 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 Good answer. Good answer. Okay, yeah, the pilgrims, yeah, when they come, a celebration that they had of life, yeah, and I tell you what, they were celebrating in some pretty tough times, yeah, anything else, what's Thanksgiving all about, right there? Part of it's in the name. Part of it's in the name, now I like that, what, anything else, or just? It's in the name. Okay, it's in the name, I like that. Cool. Giving. Giving, all right, thanksgiving. What? Ooh, that's good, that'll preach. Uh, thanksgiving is about thanking. About thanking. And our ancestors. Okay, okay. Well, then what do we have to be thankful for? Oh, right there again. We're thankful for God. We're thankful for God, okay. That's a good place to start, isn't it? Yeah, anything else? And you can you can say anything. Um, we're thankful for food, family, and everything God made us. For food, family, and everything that God has made for us, right? Okay. Anything else? Anybody thankful? What are you thankful for this morning? Um, family. Your family? Okay. We've got some nods up there. Yeah, we're thankful for family. What you got, honey? For the animals, yeah, God made them too, didn't he? Yeah, I'm especially thankful for turkeys. <laughs> right? Huh? Where would Thanksgiving be without their, hey, here we go. What you got to be thankful for? Friends. Friends. Good answers, guys. All of them. Very, very good answers. One more. We're thankful for hair. For what? For hair. For for hair, <laughs> Keith, Shannon, we're going to have that talk. <laughs> Can I be thankful for no hair? You have hair on your beard. I do, right there, right. See, it just fell. It used to be up here, and it fell down here. Yeah. <laughs> That doesn't make sense. Yeah, you know what? It would be hard to imagine, but I used to have hair just about like you. Really? Yeah, you really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got well. You got one. For teeth? That's right. That way we can eat Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, I don't really. All right, one more. Here we go. Thanks for our birthdays. Yeah, our birthday. Hey, I got a birthday coming up. It did. Yeah, I'm already eight. One, two. You're two. I'm eight. You're eight. I'm four. <laughs> You're four. Okay, I think that's a little. All right, guys, all of this is, is really good. Isn't it good to just kind of come together and share a little bit? Thankful for what we call fellowship, 
where we can get with one another and share the good things that God has done in our lives. Well, as we come up getting towards the holiday here, let's just be thinking more about that, how thankful we can be. We can be thankful because God loves us, right? And, and the scripture says his love will endure forever. And that's, that's something to be thankful for, isn't it? Yeah. And family and friends and our church family and our, oh my goodness, we got so much to be thankful for. Thank you guys for helping me to understand more about being thankful and to be comfortable in my own body yeah. with no hair. Why don't you get cold in the winter? I wear a hat. We, we got to wear a hat, don't we, buddy? What if you don't have a hat? What, what if you bald? Well, <laughs> you, got, you guys can go ahead and take a break. We'll be here just a little bit longer. You know what? I thank God that I have no hair. Amen? Hey, amen. Yeah. Hey, amen. Yeah. If you don't have a hat, just wear a hoodie. Yep. And if you don't have a hoodie or a hat. All right. I tell you what, guys. I, 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 I've got extra hats if you need one. Or you can wear two sets. Two sets of hats? A hundred sets of hats because we're bald. <laughs> Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank, we are thankful. I'm thankful for these kids. Father, I could sit up here all morning. Uh, this is just great. Thank you for them and their enthusiasm and their joy and their smiles. And, and Father, uh, thank you for loving us. Thank you for being a God who cares about his children, who will take care of all of our needs. And Lord, as we come close to this holiday, as we get closer to the day of Thanksgiving, please help us to remember it's, just, it's not something we just do once a year. It's something we should be doing every day. In Jesus' name, we're thankful. Amen. 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 All right. No children's church today, so they'll be uh, uh, sitting with their parents. and Sir. How long? 40. 40 years ago. And we got married to each other. And you got married to each other. Wow. How about a round of applause for 40 years of marriage with the shoemates? Now, how about an extended time of prayer for Karen? The Ray Shoemate Memorial Fund has been established. <laughs> Isn't this fun? Hey, you know what? I heard you could have fun at church. Is that okay? Yeah. If, if we do that, uh, we're going to talk a little more about that, kind of, sort of, in our message here this morning. I do want to thank the praise team uh, for leading us in song. Good to see the young ladies up there this morning. Beautiful job. And Stan and Debbie, you also. You also. Well, I tell you what, folks, in, in an endeavor to always remain correct, uh, both theologically and scientifically, I made an error in the elements last week. Bob, did you pick up on it? No? I, I. Sodium. Sodium does not need an external heat source to ignite. I just want you to know. I went back to my notes, my original research, and that's very important to your salvation. So we, we, we want to, <laughs> I wanted to be accurate. Table salt is one-third sodium, but by itself, all you got to do is put a drop of water in it, and, and pure sodium, and you got a problem. You got a problem. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. So theologically, scientifically, chemically, we want to be Correct. Amen? We're going to start a series uh, this morning uh, on Thanksgiving. And Pastor Adam will be bringing the, bringing the message next weekend, uh, next Sunday. Uh, so uh, uh, be, uh, be thinking, be studying uh, uh, kind of if you, in your own time. You know, what does the scripture have to say about being thankful? And what does it mean to be thankful? Uh, 
we had, uh, we had communion this morning. Uh, and uh, one of the references, one of the titles to communion is the Eucharist. What does that mean? The Thanksgiving. And uh, so we have already given thanks uh, this morning. Uh, by way of prayer, I just want to mention these two families, uh, the Curtis family and the uh, Donna Anderson family. Uh, I did services for both of them uh, in the past week uh, for Jimmy Curtis uh, and for David Anderson. Uh, did memorial funeral services for them. So be praying uh, for those families. And then uh, actually this next uh, weekend, Connie and I and the, and the kids will be uh, enjoying a wedding uh, with, uh, with the kids' oldest sister, Kelsey. Uh, she'll be getting married. And just a reminder, pray for Grandpa. Pray for Grandpa. I've been adopted by the whole family, by the way, the Curtis family, everybody. I'm just Grandpa, and, and I love that. Uh, but I have the privilege of walking my granddaughter down the aisle, and I will have the privilege of giving her hand in marriage, and then I'll have the privilege of turning around and doing the ceremony, and then I'll have the privilege of the first dance. Brothers and sisters, it don't get any better than that. So we're thankful. We're thankful. And then tonight I'll be doing a Bible study. It's a four-week study that we'll be doing in 30 minutes on the attributes of God. So come out and join us. Let's pray together, please. Father, I pray that, uh, first of all, we're just simply aware of your presence. You're here. Your spirit is here. Your spirit is in this place with desires to change lives, transform hearts, draw us closer to our Savior, or maybe even draw some to the Savior. But may our desire be simply to let the Holy Spirit do whatever he wants to do. We're here to study your word, to examine what the scripture says, Father, we thank you for your enduring word. Please, Father, open our hearts. Minister to the Curtis family, minister to the Anderson family, surround them with your love and friends. Guide us through our time together here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. As I prayed about what I would uh, be led to preach, I thought about all kinds of series, and then I thought, why get complicated? Let's just talk about Thanksgiving. Let's talk about what it means to have a thankful heart. The Spirit just, it just laid on my heart that we are to be a thankful people. And the question is not, why should I be thankful, or what should I be thankful for? The question is, how can I not be thankful? How many people in here this morning are thankful? And if I, if I were to poll uh, and, and have everybody, you know, mention or write down what it was, I, oh, there'd be some duplication, I'm sure. But there, there could be a hundred different reasons to be thankful. If you were to just mention one. You see, being thankful is not based on what. It's who. Gratitude in the Christian life is not based on something but someone. And Christ is everything. And that would be our, our goal this morning, our desire this morning, to find out that Christ is ultimately the reason to be thankful. No matter what else is going on in our life, no matter what else is happening, folks, we can be thankful. Is it always easy? No. No. But you see, a truly thankful heart is not found in the good times, but in the difficult times, the tough times, the tragic times. The pilgrims were mentioned here in our discussion with, discussion with the children this morning. So Thanksgiving was born out of a very difficult period. Half of them who had arrived at the new, new country were already gone, had died. President Abraham Lincoln declared Thanksgiving a national holiday in the middle of the Civil War. 
born out of tough times, hard times. Let's stand as we read the Word of God this morning. Psalm 100, five short verses that speak volumes. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Father, again, we ask that you would bless the reading of your word, be honored as we read and study and draw near to you. And Father, again, thank you, thank you in all things, for all things, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please be seated. So as we begin this morning to walk through our text, we're going to move very quickly into the first point. A thankful heart compels us to Christ-exalting action. So what does that mean? Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. I see in this passage enthusiasm and joy. Enthusiasm and joy. Now, how many in here would, uh, maybe we don't want to have a show of hands uh, in this, but uh, believe they have a beautiful singing voice, and before you do that, ask your neighbor. Okay, before you raise your hand, ask the person sitting next to you. Okay, how many believe all of us don't have a beautiful singing voice like Lisa? Praise God for that gift. Praise God for that gift. How many in here can make a noise? All right. See, we, we're worshipers. <laughs> we can make a joyful noise. Enthusiasm and joy. You see, thanksgiving will always express itself in worship. To simply say thank you is an expression of worship. Gratitude towards an all-providing God. Worship is an act, but it flows from a grateful heart. You can worship God standing. You can worship God sitting. You can worship loudly, or you can worship quietly. You can worship with hands raised or hands down. You can worship God with heads lifted high or bowed in humble gratefulness. You see, true worship is a heart issue. And sometimes there are times that I have found in my personal life where the best worship of I, I've had is in silence, saying nothing, just in awe and wonder of what a magnificent God we serve. Psalm 150 says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his mighty deeds, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with trumpet sound, praise him with lute and harp, praise him with tambourine and dance, praise him with strings and pipe, praise him with sounding cymbals, praise him with loud clashing cymbals, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Is everybody breathing this morning? then we can praise the Lord. We can praise the Lord. You know, it reminds me of a, a rather unenthusiastic church one day, and, and right in the middle of services, someone yelled from the back, we have a heart attack. Somebody's had a heart attack. Get help quick. So they called the medics, and they called the first responders. They all come rushing in. You know they had to check the pulse in five different people before they ever got to the heart attack victim? Make a joyful noise. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Those are three commands. They're not suggestions. Please notice that. Those are directives. 
Make a joyful noise. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. And brothers and sisters, it must always be Christ exalting, not look at me. Christ exalting. Secondly, a thankful heart begins with a spiritually transformed attitude. So we have action. We have attitude. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his people. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Sincerity and purpose. Know who God is. Now, this ought to just cause us to pause uh, as, as we consider, know who God is. Think of that statement. Think of that, that, that reality that I can know who God is. I can know the creator of heaven and earth. I can know the one who hung the stars in the sky. I can know the one who created solar systems and universes beyond anything that we have even discovered yet. I can know the one who sustains all of this, who puts the air out there for all of us to breathe, who gives us the daily requirements of our, our body, who does everything. And then he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. I can know that God. That's mind boggling. And then to know that I'm one of his sheep, the same God that spoke into being that which exists by the very word of his mouth and power created all that is out of nothing calls me his child. How can I not be thankful? You see, a thankful heart will always glorify Christ. A thankful heart will put Satan on the run. You want to get rid of the evil one? Break out in worship. <laughs> he cannot, he cannot bear the sound of God's people worshiping. Amen? It delights the heart. I'll tell you something else a thankful heart does in, in worship and praise. It reaches sinners. How'd the jailer get saved in Philippi? He heard people singing. He heard people singing. You see, and, and Paul and Silas in that situation, all that jailer said, look, those guys got something that I don't. There's something about them that is different than what I have in my life and whatever it is, I want it. You want a chance to share Christ? Be thankful and express that in your daily life. It also is an issue of identity because you see, a, a thankful heart will release the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But there's an identity crisis in the church. I think going back to my previous statement, knowing who God is and knowing that we are his sheep, I wonder how many people that are in churches today across America, around the world, that don't know who they are. They don't know who they are. They don't really know what the church is. Many don't know who they are in Christ, and maybe they just simply don't know who Christ is. It's possible. It's possible. You see, you cannot fake true thanksgiving. How many people have ever witnessed a fake smile? You know it, don't you? How many people have ever put on one? Your face will betray you. Your heart will not lead you. And the motive will rob you. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us. We are his sheep, the sheep of his pasture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joy, enthusiasm, sincerity, and purpose. Brothers and sisters, friends, it's all about him. It's all about him. In Revelation 5, verses 11 through 14, John writes, Then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders and the voice of many angels, 
numbing, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Brothers and sisters, if you don't like worship and praise now, you're going to be miserable in glory. So let's get prepared for heaven. Be worshipers. Give praise. Give thanksgiving. Thirdly, a thankful heart leads us to give God our undivided attention. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations, assurance and reason. The worshiper of Psalm 100, the worshipers, entered his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. How did you enter the gates of this assembly this morning? What did your entry look like into the sanctuary. Were we prepared for God to do something? Were we in high expectation that God had a purpose for our gathering? Beyond the time of fellowship, which was beautiful, beyond the time of giving of our tithes and offerings, which is an act of worship, beyond the time of communion, which is the sweetest of fellowships, beyond the time of singing praises and glory and honoring and giving God glory and honor and exalting his name, beyond all of that, beyond this message, what is God wanting to do this morning? What is he wanting to do? And let's don't look around and say, well, I see some work he could do over there. <laughs> What's he wanting to do right here? What's he wanting to do in the heart of Elvin Dillard? What needs to be changed? You may have come in this morning with a burden. Now, I encourage you, be thankful because there's a God you can take it to, right? Right? Be thankful, but it just may not be that morning. It's the easiest time of all to give thanks. See, I don't want to take Pastor Adam's message because I think he's going to be preaching on the tough times next week. But you see, folks, we gather together for him, ultimately, not for us. We gather out of a love and appreciation for our God and Savior. We gather for his glory, not for my benefit. He wants to do something in my life. He wants to do something in your life, but it's for his glory to accomplish his purposes. Sometimes we want to focus on what makes me happy, what I like and what I don't like. And too many people go to church to see what they can get instead of what they can give. If you come into this sanctuary with an attitude of, okay, God, what did you bring me today? Not much is going to happen. But if we gather together in one heart and in unity out of love for Christ and say, God, this is all I can really give you today is my life, my heart, my mind. Take me, I'm yours. <laughs> Jesus says the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. We are to be thankful in song. We are to be thankful in prayer. We are to be thankful in giving. We are to be thankful in loving others. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Be thankful in your trials, be thankful in your testing, be thankful in your troubles. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
He is good. In her classic autobiography, The Hiding Place, Corey Ten Boom tells of the time she and her sister Betsy were forced to take off all their clothes during Nazi inspections at a death camp. Corey related how she stood in line feeling forsaken and defiled. Suddenly the thought came to her mind that Jesus had hung naked on the cross. A sense of wonder and worship overcame her during that seemingly forsaken moment in that Nazi prison camp. Corey said she leaned forward and whispered to her sister, Bet sister Betsy, they took his clothes too. And Betsy gasped and said, oh, Corey, I never thanked him. Be thankful. Be thankful for all that Christ has done for us, for all that he is doing in us, for all that he wants to do in each life represented here today in the church that we are a part of. Be thankful that we have a God who cares, who loves us personally and intimately. And in the serious of this moment, I want Bree to know that God has numbered the hairs on my head. Are you thankful for laughter and joy? Brothers and sisters, I can tell you that... Uh, and I share this with many in here, many, many in here. There are times when it's very hard to be thankful. But you know what happened in every one of those instances, at least in my life? I was able to go to God and tell him. <laughs> How's that work? That even when I didn't feel like being thankful, there was a God I could go to. So the question, how can I not be thankful? How can I not be thankful? In the worst of times, there's a God who cares. There's a God who cares. And he cares about you this morning. He cares about you. So we're just going to take a moment, a short pause before we close the service. In a moment of quietness, and tune our hearts in to a God who cares, who loves us. And, and I would suggest, I don't want to interrupt the Spirit's work in, in people's lives, but I would, I would suggest not trying to come up with a lengthy list of items, of things, just in this quietness, tell God how thankful we are. Tell God how thankful you are. The very fact that he hears that blows my mind. So let's take that moment of silence as we close our time together this morning. Father, I pray in the precious name of Jesus that our time together here 
has exalted the name of Christ. I pray that our attitudes have been lined up under the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. I pray that we have focused on you. You're the subject of all scripture. Everything that is written is about you. <laughs> Thank you for your son, O oh Father. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who brings the reality of his life into our life. Who reveals to us our sin and our need for a Savior. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Have thy way, O oh Lord. Have thy way. So that you may be glorified. Christ may be exalted and your church may be all that you want her to be. In Christ's name, amen. Let's stand. If you've never received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I can say with assurance and quite bluntly, you have nothing to be thankful for at this point because it's not going to end well. But if you'd like to receive Christ, there are a number of us who will be present, uh, available, even after the close of service to help guide you through what it means to become a Christian, how to be saved. And I assure you, at that moment, you'll burst forth in praise <laughs> and thanksgiving. If you're here and you come this morning struggling, hurting, just don't have a real thankful heart right now. Easy. God cares. He cares. Praise God. We can go to him and say, here it is, Lord. <laughs> Here's all the junk I come in with this morning. I'm tired of carrying it. That's a God you can be thankful for. He takes all of our junk and gives us all of his righteousness. What a deal. Let's sing. two announcements first. Are you thankful you were here today? Say amen. amen. There you go. Daylight savings time is next week, so if you show up at this time next week, you'll be just in time for church. Okay, so make sure you're ready. Go out and be thankful. Go out thankfully and spread the word. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for your son and the reason to be thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>